In a time when much of the world was at war, India was writing poetry, solving equations, and sculpting the gods. This is the story of the Gupta Empire, the golden age of India, where knowledge became eternal and beauty found form. Founded by Chandragupta the first in 320 C, the empire reached its peak under the warrior king who loved music so much that he is said to have composed 147 musical pieces, but it was Chandragupta II, Vikramaditya, who really brought the empire into the golden age. His court was a beacon of learning where the greatest minds met and debated. Sanskrit became the elite literary language, and the poet Kalidasa wrote his masterpieces like drama, epics, and classical Hindu philosophy, all f and Sanskrit did not just speak, it sang. Science and math also flourished. Aryabhata calculated pi and proposed that the earth rotates on its axis. The concept of zero emerged, and there were advances in surgery, medicine, and med Centuries before Galileo, Gupta India was mapping the stars. Art and architecture also flourished. Temples like Diagar and the Ajanta Caves with their Buddhist frescoes were built. But it was the Gupta sculptures that were truly iconic, each one a masterpiece that captured the idealized, harmonious, and divine. And yet, despite the religious harmony and philosophical di Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism all coexisting and flourishing, the Bhakti movement also arose with its devotional art and its emphasis on personal experience. By the mid-6th century C, the empire was weakened by invasions from the Huns, and by the end of the century, Gupta power collapsed. But its cultural legacy, especially in Southeast Asia, endured for centuries. The Gupta era may have ended, but its wisdom did not. It lives on in numbers, in stories, and in stone. When culture becomes timeless, history calls it a golden 